Let's check in now with the trading pros at CME Group as they set up futures and options trades ahead of market moving events. Welcome to Market Movers. I'm Jim Murio with Scott Martin. Hi, Jim. So we have GDP on Friday. Okay, the last time we had a big number, a week and a half ago, I'm still kind of reeling from that NFP number. It was blockbuster. That was a good number. Are things continuing in that direction? Is the economy accelerating? Yeah, I believe it is. Now, the GDP number certainly is Q3, right? It's, it's the final read on Q3, so we don't have that big retail sales, right. sales push in there yet, which is going to be great, I think, too, for Q4. That's in January. But it would be great to see a GDP number that's strong, final for Q3, as we lead into some of the January data. When we heard from Jay Powell last meeting, he said he wanted to see inflation run a little bit. That, coupled with the China trade negotiations, will he be able to remain dovish, or at least not hawkish, in the face of an accelerating economy? Yeah, because inflation's nowhere. And, and that was a really good statement, the way he put it I and agree. how the market took it. Because there's no inflation out there. The market wants things to inflate because that generally raises equity prices, risk assets, and so forth. So Powell saying that just basically underlined the fact that they're going to stay dovish even if things start to heat up. Got it. But before we dive into our trade discussion, I'd like to point out that these are examples, not recommendations or advice. When we price these out, the e and S&P, the March contract now is trading around 3200 the buck. Yeah, Jim, uh, you mentioned about the Fed, I think, in your lead in there, which was really great because the Fed to me is one of those key points that's keeping the market kind of buoyed here in sure. the sense of impeachment, in the sense of just general times the market would pull back with profit taking. So now that the Fed's really, I think, on the curve here and doing the right thing with respect to interest rate policy, there's an interesting example I want to share with you right now, my friend, about how we can maybe look at this towards year end. Looking at buying an end of month 3200, 3225 call spread for 10 ticks, and this trade expires on December 31st at risk 500 to make a potential 750. So you take advantage of just that general market kind of feel that I have in there right now that says that the market's just going to kind of drift upwards here. The market is immense at 3,200, so it doesn't need a lot to fill out. And it's basically a way to express yourself bullishly if you've got a few weeks left. I, I like year. everything about it. I like the direction. You, I like the fact that if the market goes through 3,200, I think it's going to continue moving in that direction. I think it's a Seems good way to try a long yeah. position. I'm looking at it a very, very similar way. I'm using the micros, though, the March contract now. So we've gone through 3,200 a couple different times and haven't been able to press too much higher. If if we trade 3205, it's just a, a whisker away from where we are now. Yeah. I think that's going to signal a breakout. I think 3205 is a spot to get long with a target of 3265. If it trades back below 3170, I think that's where you stop yourself out. So this risks 175 to make a potential 300 when you're using the micros. Thoughts? Yeah, uh, the breakout's great. Yeah. Uh, I think the target's fine. Uh, the stop, you know, I don't know. I, I tend to buy those dips myself versus stopping myself out. But the micros are nice because you can change them around a good bit. There's not a huge uh, capital outlay. So maybe as you get down there, maybe you change your mind on that. But sure. I don't even think that stop's going to get hit. Going into 2020, do you feel positive about risk assets and why? I do. Um, and I think, you know, that's the tough thing about 2020 is there's going to be a lot of things that are going to change in 2020, including maybe the presidential election changing some things. So to me, it's just best to look at the next few months or next couple months. And I think given where we've talked about things and how they are today, the market is generally going to just drift this way upward. We are scarily on the same side. Oh, Jim, that's today. a bad sign. Thanks for joining us on Market Movers. I'm Jim Urio, where we are helping to make you a better trader. For more Business First AM, check us out on social media. We're on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. And go to businessfirstam.com for where to see our show on TV.